So I think that we can all agree that we are lucky to live in this point in time when knowledge about space continues to grow every day. We as a human species achieved some remarkable breakthroughs that enabled us to scientifically speaking travel back in time to the very creation of our planet and the universe in large as well as to predict the future events that may affect our very existence. Despite the fact that the interest of the general population regarding space topic is at all time high, there are still many misconceptions and straight up fictions when it comes to anything that is happening above our blue marble. Greetings folks, my name is Nikola Tomic and in today's video we're going to talk about the seven common misconceptions about space. Number one, space is far, far away. Now, because for a better part of our history, most of the things that were happening above the clouds remained a mystery, people developed a belief that all of that is extremely far away. Considering that since then, we managed to fly into the space beyond our planet's atmosphere, we know that the distance is actually not that great. Although it is still debated where the actual space begins, it is generally accepted that the Karman line, a boundary between the edge of space and Earth's atmosphere, is the line that marks this separation. It is named in the honor of a Hungarian-American aerospace engineer and physicist Theodor von Karman and the distance is around 50 to 60 miles or 80 to 100 kilometers above the sea level. Now obviously it depends on what do you consider to be far or close but that is less than a distance between LA and San Diego so in my book that is not far. Number two, the sun is on fire. So you probably heard or believe that this one at some point. Humans have been describing the sun as a ball of fire for millennia and it's really hard to blame them for that. After all, it is round, bright and extremely hot so the only thing that we were able to compare it to is fire itself. The problem is when you think about what is needed for a fire to burn, you will quickly discover that that is oxygen, fuel and heat. If you take one thing out of the equation, it doesn't burn. Now in the case of the sun, we have fuel in the form of a hydrogen and we also have heat, but because of the lack of oxygen, this triangle remains incomplete. Instead, we have a continuous nuclear fusion that produces enormous amounts of heat and light radiation that from our perspective appears like a giant fireball. Number three, Earth is closer to the sun in the summer. Sure, summers are significantly warmer than winters in most places on Earth, but this has nothing to do with the Earth's distance from the Sun. Although our planet's orbit around the Sun does vary slightly, it is only by 3%, so totally insignificant when it comes to temperatures on Earth. Also, you are probably aware that Earth has two hemispheres that experience the summer in the opposite times of the year. The real culprit behind hot summers is Earth's tilt that enables sun rays to hit surface of our planet at different angles in different time of the year. So in the summer, for example, the sun is closer to 90 degree angle thus it's able to concentrate its radiation to a certain area. In the winter time however it is at a significantly lower angle thus the sun rays get dispersed across the atmosphere instead of being focused on the ground. Number four, the sun is the only star that has planets around it. So humanity became aware of the existence of other planets very early in the development of our civilization. Many ancient people named these celestial objects and gave them divine powers, although they were not able to completely unriddle their secrets. Over time, we were able to identify them and even explore them through various probes that we sent to their atmospheres and even their surfaces. When it comes to detecting planets around other stars, however, things get a bit complicated. See, because of the heat and light radiation, till relatively recently we were unable to detect planets that are orbiting other stars. With the advances in astronomy however, we started to discover more and more planets that are outside of our solar system and as of now we are aware of the existence of around 7000 exoplanets with an estimate of over a billion in our galaxy alone. Number 5. Black holes act like vacuums. So black holes are some of the most fascinating and terrifying occurrences in the universe. Depending on their size, they can completely destroy stars and planets, stripping their surface and gases until there is nothing left. Now, contrary to what some people believe, they do not achieve this by acting like vacuums. Instead, they behave very much like any other star or planet does. Because of an enormous concentration of gravity, their pull is much stronger, so much so that even light itself gets caught up and absorbed. To put this in perspective, the speed necessary to escape Earth's gravitation is just above 25,000 miles per hour, while the speed of light that gets entangled in the black hole is 670,616,600 29 miles per hour. 
This however has its limits, thus if any object travels far and fast enough, it will be perfectly fine. Number 6. Asteroid Belt is very dense. So if you ever watched any movie that includes a spaceship going through an asteroid belt, you probably know that this is a very dangerous affair, the one that pretty much resembles walking into a minefield due to the proximity of one to another. This however cannot be further from the truth. See, the size of asteroids in the asteroid field between Jupiter and Mars for example varies from a school bus to a dwarf planet. The whole field spans across an area of 140 million miles with distances between asteroids averaging double the distance between Earth and Moon. Nonetheless, this still means that extra caution and considerations are required when planning a path for satellites or probes with main danger representing a small particles that are created when larger objects collide. And number 7. Stars often twinkle. So if you go outside and look up at the bright sky during the night, you may notice that some of the stars appear to be twinkling and flickering. Naturally, you will be forgiven to think that this is how star radiation works, but the thing is, this happens only when we look at it from our perspective on Earth. See, because our atmosphere is filled with various gases, they can be hot or cold, this mix causes light to bend and be distorted by the time it reaches our eyes. If we were to look at it from the space, this will not happen simply because of the lack of obstacles. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for sticking in. If you want to support me, you can like, subscribe, or you can go to my Patreon link down in the description below. In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.